My name is Sandrine Moji and today I am going to show you how to paint a pear in a botanical style. This is the second video I'm doing for Fabriano and I'm delighted to be back with you here for another project. If you haven't seen the first one, it was for beginners, it was to paint a viola, showing you how to do wet in wet washes. This one is more for intermediate level and it's going to focus on techniques to give form and a three-dimensional effect to your subject. Are you ready? Let's go! First, let's have a look at the materials we are going to use. For the drawing, we need cartridge paper, a ruler, a thick pencil, a finer pencil for the detail, and a rubber. My favorite watercolor paper is Fabriano Artistico Hot Pressed Extra White. And for this particular painting, I am going to use it in the 640 grams weight. Because the pear is going to cover a large area and I'm going to use a lot of water. So the thicker the paper, the better. We're also going to need a selection of brushes in various sizes. I use synthetic brushes in sizes 3, 0, 2, 4 and a larger one for the water, a palette and some artist quality paints to paint our pair. Let's start with the drawing. I am holding the pair in my hand and I am going to start with very loose lines with the thicker pencil. So a pair is made of two circles, two spheres, one on top of each other. The top one is smaller than the bottom one. I also have a line going through the pair that will go from the base of the stalk to the remnants of the sepals at the back here. And if you were to cut that pair open, you would see that line running down the center. So my top here is more or less flat. And then I've got the curve coming down. And at the bottom here, I've got a dent where the sepals are gonna be. top is a little narrower than this and then at some point when you have your rough line you start erasing the lines that you don't want and your pair appears out of those rough lines now for the stalk I'm going to use a finer pencil and the stalk goes slightly to the left compared to that line here. And it's wider at the top. And wider at the base. And at the bottom here, I can see the sepals. They are like little triangles coming out at the base of the pair. And we have a pair. The next step is to trace the pair to transfer it to the watercolor paper. Now you might not want to do that part, you might want to draw straight onto your watercolor paper, but I like to do this because I like my watercolor paper to be very clean. And then the tracing goes on top of the watercolor paper and you can use transfer paper to transfer it to the watercolor paper, going over the line again. And when you remove the tracing, the pair is there transferred on the watercolor paper, ready to be painted. Now let's choose our palette. The main color of the pair is a pale yellow. This is gonna be Hansa Yellow Light. If you don't have Hansa Yellow Light, you can use a lemon yellow but check that your lemon yellow is transparent. There's also another yellow in that pair, 
a slightly richer one, and that's Mayan yellow. If you don't have Mayan yellow, you can add a little bit of New Gamboge or Indian yellow to your lemon. Then we have the red, and that's Carmine. And Carmine might look too red for it, but remember that you are going to mix it with the yellow by layering the washes and mix with the yellow, it will give you that color. In different proportion and that will be the right color for your red. Then we need a blue for the shadow color and as I want a little bit of texture we're going to go with French ultramarine which is a granulating color and will give us a little bit of texture. And the last color is burnt sienna for the stalk to which we can also add a little bit of blue. For the shadow color, we are going to mix three primary colors, one yellow, one red, and one blue, to make a harmonic shadow mix. So we're going to go with Hansa Yellow Light, Carmine, and French Ultramarine. And that will give us our shadow color, a neutral gray, which we can water down to make it paler. Now we have all our colors, we are ready to start. Now we have everything we need to start painting on our watercolor paper. But before we get to that, let's talk about shadows and where we are going to place them. In this tutorial, I want to pay particular attention at giving form to your subject, making it three dimensional. So if our light source comes from the top left, the main highlight is going to be here along the top left and the main shadow is going to be along the right side and under the neck of the pair here. But this pair is not isolated into space. If we take the shadow right up to the edge, it's going to look flat. And the reason is, around this pear, you have the rest of the pear tree, or you have a table on which the pear is resting. And whatever is around that pear is reflecting some of the light towards this side. So on the edge of the pear here, there will be some light. Now, that light is only partially reflected. So the light on here won't be as bright as the highlight. But what it means in practice is that the darker shadows are not going to reach the edge. There's going to be a light a bit around the edge here. And this reflected light is what is going to give the 3D effect on your subject. Now we have another area here that is casting a shadow here and casting some shadows on the sepals and a bit of shadow here. So we're going to have a highlight also along here. And we're also going to have some shadow on the right side of the stalk. But again, there will be a small area of light along the edge reflected by whatever is to the right of the pair. Now we have our tone study. We can get to the watercolor paper and start painting the shadows. We are gonna paint the pear wet in wet, so we're gonna wet the whole pear with a large brush. This is a number 12. And once the pear is wet, we're gonna drop in the shadow color following the tone study that we have done earlier. So starting here, not on the edge, but close to it, on the right side. This is the main shadow area. And then there's a little bit under the neck of the pear here. Don't go too dark because the pear is quite pale in color. It's yellow. so. You don't want the shadows to be too dark, otherwise the pear will look too grey by the end of it. 
As long as the paper is still wet, you can still add more paint, but when it starts drying, you have to stop. Now the areas here at the bottom, I will do separately. I'm gonna first leave all this to dry. What I can do is the stalk. Same shadow color. But here I can go darker because the stalk is darker than the pear. And I want this to show enough. Okay, and now we're gonna leave this to dry. Now we've finished painting the shadows, we are gonna paint a series of wet and wet washes to start building up the color. So at first, I'm just adding pure water. And the first wash is Hansa Yellow Light. And I'm starting with painting over the shadows, letting it spread towards the mid-tone. Over the reflected light. But when it comes here to the other side, I am going to go along the edge, catching my pencil line. Being careful to reserve the highlight here. So I don't want to add any paint to where my strongest highlight is gonna be, which is gonna be here and along down here. However, in the mid-tones and on the bottom part, I can just add quite a bit of yellow. Because there is water here, I'm not going to get a hard edge around the highlight. It's going to be a soft edge, which is what I want. But equally, I don't want any color on it. So now with a clean brush, I'm just going over the edge of my highlight, softening a little. And now we have to leave this to dry before we do the next wet and wet wash. The first wash has dried, so the pear is ready to get a second wash. Again, wet and wet, as we're building the color. I need a little bit more yellow, so I'm gonna start again over the shadows and the mid-tone, still with Hansa Yellow Light. Going right up to the edge, keeping the same line as we did before to get a neat edge. But this time, as the first yellow is still wet, I am gonna drop in some Mayan yellow into the Hansa yellow light, just to vary the color so that it doesn't look like a flat color and to warm it up a little as well. And again, leave this wash to dry. Now we have two layers of yellow. It's time to think about adding some red. And we're still working wet in wet, so I'm adding pure water to the whole pair. And I'm gonna go in with pure carmine. brushing my paint down because if you look at the texture of the pear you can see that there are some lines you can't see them very much but they are definitely there so if you want to give the right texture you need to follow those lines And although the red patch is not everywhere, I'm still extending my wash over the yellow so that the yellow looks like the yellow on the pear. And as long as 
the paper is wet, you can keep on adding color. I am uh, with a clean brush lifting a little bit of reflected light at the bottom of the pair and at the top and now we're going to leave this to dry. The pair was still a little pale so I added another wash on the body and now that this has dried I am ready to paint the stalk. So I'm wetting the stalk all over and then I'm adding some brown burnt sienna on the shadow side. The highlight on here is going to have a little bit of paint on top of it, unlike the pair where I reserve the highlights here. Here I'm not going to reserve them as much, so I'm adding brown all over. And then I'm just going to build up more brown on the right and not so much on the left. For the dry brush work we are going to go straight onto the dry paper and do the details that need to be sharper than what we can get with wet in wet. So for example on the stalk here there are some little lines and ridges and I'm going to go in straight with the brown to do this on dry paper so that the lines show quite sharply. And then the same goes for the sepals here. I'm going to do the detail straight on the paper with that water added first. I'm doing a first layer where the color is even and then I will go back with a second layer to show clearly what's in front and what's in the back. I'm going to use some of the shadow color to go very dark behind there and I'm also going to use my tiniest brush which is a three zeros to keep those details sharp. Now all the washes are done, wet and dry, but one more thing we need to do is all the little details on the pair. So there are some blemishes, some damage, and also all those little dots everywhere. So again, using my brown mix, I'm gonna paint a few of those. So I'm gonna put these in. And for the little dots, I'm just going to do loads of little dots with my tiny brush. Try to keep them uneven in space and size and color. And now strengthening the color on the blemishes with more brown and if that's not dark enough use a little bit of the shadow color as well and this is the pair finished now all you have to do is sign it frame it and put it up on the wall and this is it this is the pair finished thanks for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you soon. Happy painting, bye.